Hello everybody and welcome to another one of Football Manager Rebuild here on the channel. I'm super excited for this one because not only has it been a little while since we did our last one-off rebuild, but also as you can see in the background here, today's rebuild is with Chelsea, my supported club, as we see what life could potentially be like under the new era, the new ownership of Todd Bowley. Roman Abramovich is out the door, there's a new ownership there at Chelsea and it looks like there's a fair bit of transfer business already potentially on the way. We're going to try and replicate that as good as possible in this simulation and also then do our own business on top of that to see how far we can take Chelsea with what is going to be a fairly new look squad. There's a lot of players leaving, there's a lot of players that could potentially leave and of course there's going to be a lot of incomings at a club the size of Chelsea. So here we are as Chelsea manager but before we get stuck into the rebuild I'd like to ask you guys a big favour if you could hit that like button it would really help in sharing these videos out to as many people as possible. The more of you we get on board smashing that like button the the better the video will do. Also, if you are new to the channel, we do stuff like this fairly regularly as well as more long-term series. So if you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. Comment down below what rebuild you'd like to see next. And you can also find a Football Manager Discord linked in the description. But here we are with Chelsea in 2021, the start of the season that's just finished in real life. So we're not going to do anything here. We're just going to let the season simulate, see what happens, and then we'll take control after the first season. So we need to forward ahead to see what Chelsea looks like after one year. Here we are, one season has has passed as Chelsea manager while simulating. We have had no hands-on interaction with the team here. The only thing we've done is told them to play a specific tactical style that was meant to be a replication, kind of, of Thomas Tuchel's style of play. You'll see it's fairly similar, not completely similar, but I wanted to make something that is both a mix of how his style of football is and also something that actually works in Football Manager. So that's what we've gone for. But with a new ownership in charge, Chelsea have had a half-decent season. They won the Super Cup, much like in real life. Life. They were runners up in the Carabao Cup, losing to Liverpool, much like real life as well, except this time it wasn't Kepa missing a penalty. We also got knocked out in the FA Cup in the quarter final. We got to the first knockout round of the Champions League and we finished fourth in the Premier League, joint with Manchester United in third place on points. So that's where we got to. Nothing too much has gone on, but obviously, one of the big features of Chelsea season this year is player contract expiring. Now, I haven't been able to put the players to the exact teams that they are going to join in real life, but we have got Kennedy leaving here on a free. We've got Christensen, Aspilicueta, Rudiger. All of their deals are about to expire and they're about to move to new clubs. Interestingly, I think Rudiger and Christensen, both of them are going to Monaco, which seems like a bit of a weird move, but that's where they're off. Aspilicueta is on his way to Barcelona, which even if he does decide to stay in a Chelsea shirt, it looks like could be a potential one day at least, even if he stays on for one extra season. But with that done, we've pretty much got everything ready to now take over and start bringing in some of the signings that Todd Bowley's Chelsea have been linked to. I'm very excited for it, so let's get into the transfers. So we're going to start off with the sales. One thing to note is you might see this pen icon up here. To anyone who does know, that means we have the Football Manager in-game editor active. The only reason I had that on is so that I could make sure the takeover happened in the right way and Chelsea got a similar budget to what they're getting in real life. Outside of that, I haven't used it, so don't worry. We're not using that to cheat the system or anything. But we have moved a fair few players on. Obviously, we had the free agent leaving that we spoke about already but in terms of players for prices Baba Rahman has left the club to join Boca for 2.1 million pounds Alonso leaves the club to join Frankfurt for 8 million it looks like he might be going to Barcelona in real life and then similarly to real life as well it looks like Batshuayi will leave the club and he has left for about 5 million pounds to Krasnodar out in Russia on top of these transfers out we've actually made a lot more in player sales that are hidden on another screen as well as some transfers that we've bought in but before I talk about them I just want to take a minute to talk about what I'm very happy to say is my first sponsored slash partnered video on this channel. Now I'd ask you guys, if you could, don't just skip ahead because this is something that I actually am a big fan of and I'm really passionate about. So just give me a minute. But on this channel, I've had a fair few offers for sponsorships. Nothing too crazy, but a fair few, but nothing ever felt like the right fit for my content. And then I saw an email the other day to say, so rare we're interested in making the Jake Cooper channel a partner. Now I thought this was a joke at first because so rare is actually a platform that I've used for a long while before they ever got in touch. 
And I absolutely love it. I think it's phenomenal. It's growing at a massively quick rate. And I think it's something that really suits the football manager audience down to the ground as well. If you don't already know about So Rare, it combines card collecting and fantasy football together. On this platform, you purchase officially licensed cards of some of your favorite players from some of your favorite teams licensed by the likes of the Bundesliga, the Scottish First Division. I think La Liga is also in there. There's some Serie A Premier League clubs amongst many others. The Portuguese divisions are in there too, the Eredivisie. And and these cards are so fun to collect, but that isn't the end of it all. You can then use these cards to compete for extra cards that are worth real money in their SO5, which is basically their fantasy football format. Now, since I started playing this about half a year ago, I've had great fun. But if you're not convinced by the platform just yet, I would suggest downloading it through the link in the description. Of course, that supports me and play the casual leagues. These are the free leagues where you can get free cards and you can just learn the game and see if you enjoy it. And then if you want to, you can go on to purchase the cards that actually have a value. Now, as fun as the SO5 is and the fantasy football is, what I like to do most on So Rare is to purchase players who are undervalued or maybe wonder kids that haven't broken through yet and get in their card early. Bear in mind, there's only a limited number of every player in terms of their collectible card. And then once you have that card, if that player then becomes good, then the valuation of the card is going to skyrocket and you can make profit. That's not to say you'll only ever make profit. There is, of course, risk involved with any of these things, particularly football. Someone could get injured or whatever. Football careers can be all over the place and very hard to predict. But if you've got the right nose for it, you can potentially have great fun on So Rare, and I have so far. Now, So Rare have partnered with us here on the channel, meaning if you create your account through the link in the description, my name will then be linked to your account, meaning even if you play the free games for now, that's completely fine. Learn the platform, just enjoy it, see if you do enjoy it at first. And then if you decide to get involved and buy cards later on, I will earn a small commission of that, which will help support the channel. So I just want to put that out there. That I do technically get something from this, but I really do believe in the platform. I think it's great fun. I suggest it to anyone if anyone wants to try it out check it out in the link in the description thank you guys for listening hopefully that piqued your interest even just slightly and if it did check out other youtube videos on it check out other content out there and i'm sure you'll be hooked on so rare in no time they actually as well just a side note they gave us some cards after partnering with the jake cooper channel so they've given us power torres because we manage villarreal um, i've got a lacroix card from wolfsburg because we manage them they also gave me a raquetli bazaar card who plays for vitesse which is a club that we managed a few years ago in fm so that was really nice of them but anyway back to the video thank you guys for listening here we go with the other sales and the plays we've bought in we'll start with the sales Kepa has been linked away with Chelsea for quite some while particularly to Lazio and to Maurizio Sarri now we've taken a big loss on him here selling him for 10 million pounds but I feel it's the right move to do with Kepa as the number two he's not going to stay there for too long we sold Jorginho to Juventus both him and Kante have a year left on their deal and I decided I was only going to keep one around long term Jorginho is being linked away in real life so we did sell him. Romelu Lukaku we actually got a great valuation on because he did perform well in the fake year that we simmed but of course in real life that won't be the case for Chelsea but I do imagine that he will leave whether it's back to Inter on some kind of loan I don't know but we're getting rid of Romelu Lukaku. He's also very overpowered as well in FM which would have made it a bit unfair in this rebuild simulation. As much as I love Ruben Loftus-Cheek he needs some first team football consistently so he has gone to Fulham for 7.25 million. Ross Barkley I transfer listed and Arsenal came in for 12 million so good on them have Ross Barkley I do not mind I'm sure in real life one of the forwards at Chelsea will leave and in this case Timo Werner had interest Roma wanted him 29 million is a deal that I could see something similar in terms of the valuation for Werner in real life we've sold Malang Saar he wasn't part of the squad Gilmore's gone out on loan as has Broya, Matson, and Henry Lawrence but then in terms of the players we've brought in we focused on targets that I really thought could rejuvenate this Chelsea side the first one Jules Koundé is a player that Chelsea are linked to in real life and therefore I had to sign him they've got a big gap now in defense at Chelsea so Jules Koundé joins the club we sent Kepa to Lazio and we bought in Thomas Strakosha for only £600,000 his contract was expiring and he is now the new number two at Chelsea Josko Gavardiol is another name linked to Chelsea currently the young Croatian from Leipzig has joined us he'd be perfect in a five at the back system playing as that left-sided centre-back we broke his release clause of 74 million and I think he is going to be an unbelievable player both in real life and in Football Manager. Again, linking it back to So Rare, if you got Josko's card and then eventually he became one of those top tier centre-backs in world football, the valuation goes up and it's just great fun. Honestly, I, I love So Rare. I really do. Very happy they've partnered with the channel. We then went for two other signings, which maybe aren't super realistic. I could have bought in Ousmane Dembele, but I had actually recorded this before those links really started, so I didn't bring him in. But Declan Rice is a name that I think will be continued to link to Chelsea until he makes that move from West 
West Ham. And I think Chelsea is very much a likely destination for the man. Obviously, Kante and Jorginho's contracts are running low. So we needed a new midfielder. And I think Declan Rice is future captain material. £112 million for the man was all that West Ham were willing to accept. They were in a good negotiation position. But instantly you can see his valuation has gone through the roof for one of England's best midfielders. I know there's a lot of hate towards Declan Rice and Mason Mount and those kind of players for English bias. But I really do think they are uber talented. Obviously with Lukaku leaving, it meant we did need a striker. I know Jesus has been linked to Chelsea in real life and Cuckoo. But at the time, Lewandowski was picked to leave Bayern Munich. Now, it seems that he'll only ever join Barcelona if he was going to leave Bayern at this stage. But who knows, if he was available on the market and Chelsea offered the right deal, he could be convinced. So for the sake of a football manager simulation, I decided Chelsea were going to go all out for target Robert Lewandowski, who they've been linked to year after year in the past. £50 million we paid to bring him to Stamford Bridge. He might be 33, but he is still a lethal marksman. So these are the signings that we've bought in, the players we've got rid of, and it leaves our squad looking like this in terms of the squad depth. We've got Lewandowski and Havertz as our two striking options currently. Mount and Pulisic are my ideas of inside forwards on the left, and then Havertz and Ziyech are also players who can play on that inverted winger on the right-hand side position. We've got Kovacic and Gallagher coming back off loan to play in Chelsea's midfield, and then we've got Kansas and Rice on the other side. Ben Chilwell and Emerson are our two left wing back options with Reese James and Callum hudson Odoi are options at right wing back. We've got Trevor Chalaba, Thiago Silva, Josko Gavardiol, Jules Koundé and Levi Colville coming off of his loan at Huddersfield to be a potential Chelsea starter in the future. He's had a good bit of development recently. It looks like he might have the potential to be at least a squad player for us, but he'll need a good few years to get there, I think, because realistically, even with him developing, particularly in those physicals, he does not look like he is going to be a Premier League centre-back just yet, but there's time. So this is what our squad looks like, but let's see how this Chelsea side will do under the new era of Todd Bowley. And it's not a terrible season for Chelsea. They have won the FA Cup, which of course is a great bit of silverware for them to win, beating Manchester City 3-1 in the final. We got knocked out of the Carabao Cup early on. Let's forget about that, but maybe that helped us do better in other competitions as we weren't so tired. We got to the final of the Champions League, but did lose out to Liverpool in a 2-0 loss, which was unfortunate. But we move, we'll get there eventually, I hope. In the Premier League, we finished third on 82 points after 38 games. Robert Lewandowski having a stormer of a season. Just so you know, unlike other one-off rebuilds on the channel, instead of doing five seasons, as Chelsea are already a big club, we're just going to do three seasons just to see how far Chelsea can go. In terms of average match rating, it was Lewandowski and Reese James who are our best players who actually played a significant amount of football. Adding to that, Ben Chilwell as the left wing back. This is probably what you'd expect as a Chelsea fan. Mason Mount, Kai Havertz, also two of the better players in the side, getting 17 and 25 goals between them. Trevor Shalaba has had a good year, as had Mendy, Kante, Gavardiao and Koundé. But if we go towards the bottom and the players that haven't appeared so much, we've got the likes of hudson Adoy, Gallagher, Colville, Strakosha, who haven't really hit the ground running just yet, but hopefully with a bit of time will do. Hakim Ziyech looks like a potential sellable option and Declan Rice hasn't had the world's best season, but he is still settling in to that midfield role and hopefully we'll get a little better out of him next year. So it's been a decent season for Chelsea. We've actually managed to beat Manchester City, but there's still a long way to go to close the gap on Premier League and Champions League winning Liverpool. What can we do to close the gap? Well, we can make transfers. Okay, here we are with the season two transfers. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying but we've made a few more sales. Hakim Ziyech has left the club to join America out in Mexico for £13 million. An odd deal, but he has left the club. Vinny Meekin is a player that's came out of our youth academy and looks amazing. He's gone out on loan to Cardiff, so let's see how well he can do. But he looks like he's got a great future. But we've bought three ex-Chelsea players back to Stamford Bridge to help us out this season. The first one being Fikayo Tomori. I'm very surprised Chelsea sold him without a buyback option to AC Milan. I get at the time that he wasn't getting first team football, but it really was a strange deal to let him go. And he has shone out in Syria since leaving. 55 million is an amazing deal for this man. And I think he really does reinforce that defensive line for us. We've also bought in Tino Livramento from Southampton, ex-Chelsea player who left for only a small 
small fee to go join Southampton. And after two good seasons developing in that right wing back spot, that right back spot, he is going to be our backup to Reese James and might even be good enough to let Reese James move in to those centre back slots. But I think he's going to be a great player for us with a lot of potential and someone that I think in real life Chelsea might take a punt on again a few years down the line. With Hakim Ziyech leaving, we needed another player on the wing. So we have signed Michael Elise of Crystal Palace. From what I believe, the Frenchman did play for Chelsea at some point in his youth career, but he joins us after a career of going from Reading to Crystal Palace. They got relegated and he was available still for a pretty large fee of £60 million. But at 21, he's a player with a lot of room to grow. He can play on both flanks and I think he'll be a great option for our team. Team, so we bought him in but other than that nothing else was done in the incomings department we did have a big sale of Timoe Bakayoko I bet you forgot about him he went to Nice for 10.75 million and we loaned out the likes of Broya and Andrin yet again hopefully they can keep developing because Broya looks like he might have the ability to maybe replace Robert Lewandowski when he eventually retires but Lewandowski still going strong still a great striker so let's see how we'll get on in this season this is a team that we're running with currently in terms of squad depth in each position. We've got a lot more depth now, particularly in those centre-back spots. Ethan Ampadu is now a big part of the squad too, after a few half decent loans I would say. I think this squad's got a lot more about it now than it did before and if we do go and select our best 11, pick without restriction, best 11, this is apparently what our best team would be should everybody be fit. Mendy, Tamori, Kunde, Gavardiol, James, Chilwell, Rice, Kante, Havertz, Mount and Lewandowski. Not a bad first 11 is that but let's see how they can actually do in our second season as Chelsea boss. Can we get a European title or maybe even a Premier League title under our belts? And the second season has gone amazingly well we have finished as title champions on 80 points have we won anything else <laughs> we've won the champions league as well how easy was that everybody rebuilding chelsea clearly isn't that hard but taking a step back really to win the league on 80 points and 39 goal difference isn't actually that impressive based on recent years. Six games lost, eight games drawn. I think we were very lucky to win it this year. It looks like we were just the best of a bad bunch, but we will definitely take a title win and a 4-2 win in extra time against PSG in the Champions League, giving Chelsea their third Champions League title. Let's have a look at who the most influential players were this year. If any of our players have came along strong, who has been doing the best for us? Well, going right to the top, of course, Lewandowski is still up there, as well as Reese James and Ben Chilwell. We've got Levi Colville playing a lot better this season, now wanted by Atletico Madrid. The centre-back is starting to get more game time and is definitely starting to look like he fits right in to a Chelsea shirt. We've got Jules Koundé, Gavardio, Livermento, Tamori, Shalaba, Havertz, Mount, everybody doing their bit for the club. It looks like the likes of Gallagher and Gilmore, as well as hudson Adoy, maybe haven't got quite what it takes to be a world-class player for Chelsea and Pulisic as well. We haven't really spoke about him, but he doesn't seem to be doing all that much for us. So we'll have to decide where his future lies with his contract expiring very soon. But I think this team has done very well. If we do have a look at that PSG game that we won 4-2, where is it? Just down here. The team we played in that match, let's have a look, was it's squashed, but it's Mendy in goal with Shalaba, Koundé, Gavardio, Chilwell, Livermento, Kante Rice, Havertz, Mount, I believe that is, yes, and Lewandowski. Mason Mount scoring two, Havertz with one, and Kovacic with the other. Chelsea weren't phased by a 94th minute equaliser. And it is another good few trophies to have under the belt. It looks like the Todd Bowley era is going very well. If Chelsea were to sign these players in real life, they're of course getting some great talent, but also players who can develop in the future. But that's not to say that Lewandowski hasn't completely carried these last couple of seasons. He probably won't be joining Chelsea. Chelsea would be very lucky if they ever had a striker to the level of what Robert Lewandowski is doing in this simulation. But we've got one more season to go. So let's see if we can pick up any more silverware. But first of all, we've got a few transfers to make. So with a Premier League win and a Champions League win it's allowed us to bring in some quality players and we've decided to focus on quality over quantity. We have brought in Jude Bellingham from Borussia Dortmund to fill in in Kante's boots who has left the club. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. £80 million is what we paid for him, his release clause and he will make a great midfielder for Chelsea. Very happy to have him, Mount, Rice in the team as well as another very good youngster by the name of Jamal Mursalia. I don't know exactly how you pronounce that but the former Bayern Munich player did come through Chelsea in his very early years. He has done very well at Bayern since, becoming one of the world's best in his position. And I think alongside that forward line, 
This man is going to be unbelievable. £88 million for him, combined with Bellingham, that's over £160 million for the two. And we finished off our midfield reinforcements by bringing in Matthias Nunes. From Sporting, he cost us £30 million. We're looking at about £200 million for the lot of them. He takes Kovacic's number eight shirt, replacing him as our new central midfielder because he has moved on to Paris Saint-Germain on a free deal. Angolo Kante has gone to Real Madrid on a free as well. Their contracts were expiring, so we let them go. We've also sold Pulisic to Inter Milan for £33 and a half million pounds. Our youngster that was developing very nicely, Vinny Meeking, is out on loan to Ajax, now valued at £50 million. Pounds. This guy has been smashing it, maybe not so much in the goal scoring department, he's been doing okay, but in terms of his development, he is looking very, very good and a bright spark for Chelsea's future. But in terms of our squad depth now, we have brought in a few more youngsters to fill up the squad. We've got Mendy and Strakosha in goal, Kunde, Shalaba, Tomori, Ampadu, Gavardiol and Levi Colville as our defensive options, all of which are very good players and easily Premier League quality in their own right. Ben Chilwell is now backed up by Ian Matson, who I think will make a very good backup. I believe Emerson left on a free deal, so now Ian Matson will take that place as our backup left wing back. Reese James and Livramento are our right wing back options with Callum Hudson Odoi, who can also float around on those wings if needed as well. Our midfielders are Nunez, Gallagher, Bellingham, and Declan Rice. Jamal Messalia is an option out wide with Mason Mount. We have Kai Havertz and Michael Olise. And then up front, we've got Lewandowski and Armando Broya, who is now ready to be part of this Chelsea team. Lewandowski getting a lot older now, and Broya will hopefully take the step up in this third season and become a key player for us. Very happy with the work we've done here at Chelsea. And we've also bought back some of those players that I'm sure Chelsea regret selling in the past. This is now our best 11, a very nice side, a side that I think would dominate most leagues in the world. But we'll be able to do it two seasons in a row. Let's check it out. And we have, it's another title win, this time doing a lot better, 87 points and winning the title, two points over Liverpool. Runners up in the Super Cup and the FA Cup. We won the Community Shield, got knocked out in the Carabao in the semi-final, but we did beat Liverpool 2-0 in the Champions League final in extra time. Interestingly, we lost the FA Cup to Liverpool, we beat Liverpool in the league, and we then beat them in the Champions League. So it looks like they took one whilst we took the other, but our team has done incredibly well to keep winning these tournaments. Let's have a look at this final game of the season against Liverpool in the Champions League. 2-0 in extra time. It was Mason Mount and Nunes getting the goals. What a run in this was at the end of the season, by the way. We played Liverpool on the final day to decide who won the league. Then we played them again to decide who won the FA Cup. And then once more to decide who won the Champions League. It might not be much to watch, but let's have a look at our two goals in this game. This is a team that we ran with. It's a very nice Chelsea side. Livermento filling in at left wing back in Ben Chilwell's absence. For once, it wasn't Lewandowski getting us the goals or Havertz. It was the rest of the team. And Mason Mount has continued to be a big player for this side in big moments. But here's Michael Elise. Plays for Reese James. He's tackled. The ball falls to Mason Mount. And Mason Mount puts us 1-0 up in extra time of the Champions League final. But we didn't stop there. Only a few minutes later, with only a couple minutes to go, Mason Mount picks the ball up in the box. The captain floats it over to Broyer. He knocks it back across the box. And our new sign-in, Matthias Nunes, finishes it up to give a 2-0 win to Chelsea in the Champions League final. It's two Champions League, two Premier Leagues and an FA Cup, as well as a mixture of other trophies in and around that. But they're the big tournaments that we have won. It's been a great rebuild for Chelsea. We've brought in some great players. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Let me know who you'd like to see rebuilt next. Thank you guys for watching. Like the video and subscribe if you've enjoyed. And if you want to check out So Rare, use the link in the description before you sign up. I'd greatly appreciate it. It will really help out on the channel. But thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.